Hey guys, Jason. And today I want to talk about something that's way more serious. It's probably going to be one of the most serious videos I do in 2015. And probably one of the most important. So I've been debating for like the last three weeks how, for a lot longer than that. Because I want to do a video on this for forever. And I feel like this is the good time to do it. And I, I've been debating on how to even start this topic. So I wanted to start with the, the name Paycoin. Now if you've heard the news about this, instantly you're probably going to get negative feelings towards that word. But let's go back. I want to talk about you know the creators of Paycoin. You know what happened with it, all the information. Um, as always, I keep normally keep names redacted, um, even though I probably should say the names. I don't for privacy reasons. I know a lot of people out there, you know, the news is public, but you know. So um, GAW Miner, um, actually, <laughs> sad enough too. I have two GAW miners, or they call them Gall miners, um, back that I use for Litecoin mining. It, well, actually. Foreign coin and Litecoin, I have a couple of them doing different tasks, but right now they're mining foreign coins because of the price value. But we have the situation where, you know, we have GAW miners sold hardware. And they did fine with that. Um, they basically were buying hardware in bulk and then reselling it. A lot of companies do that. It's a common business practice. Then they get in the cloud mining service. They call, it, um, they call them hash miners. Now, <clears throat> this is where I got interested. A lot of people asked me about it, so I actually bought about $100 worth of... Um, hash mining equipment online. I barely broke even before the service got shut down, and I'll say this. So it ran for about seven or eight months, and what we ended up having happen was they just shut down. They're like, well, we just can't afford to keep it running, yada, yada, yada. Well, suddenly all those people that have bought these you know, hash coins, or not hash coins, hash mining units, um, basically it's cloud mining. And if you guys know any of my stories, I one of my first mistakes in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies was buying mining contracts. And so I'm a very big advocate of no matter what, do not buy mining contracts. I don't give financial or investment advice, but that's one of those things where I put my foot down and I say, do not buy mining contracts. You know, unless you're big time, it's not going to you know turn out good for you. So, but I say that, but I bought it because I wanted to be a, I was going to do a video on it. And I, I felt bad about it because I thought, there's nothing positive about this. So I just kind of scrapped it, considered it $100 a waste. But I actually made up like $101 by the by time they closed. So I, I broke even. Um, not for inflation, of course, but I broke even. And um, so they did that, and then they shut down that. Then they came out with this new idea, and a lot of people were really excited about this. I, I, I mean, I, I don't, you know, now it's, you know, seven or eight months past, but when it started in December, there was huge excitement about this. Um, there's a thing called Paycoin. And it was basically going to be an alternative Bitcoin or Litecoin. And, you know, everybody does this. Everybody tries to create a coin like CoreCoin that they think is going to be the next Bitcoin. And, oh, these are the reasons it's better and yada, yada, yada. And I'm always, I've kind of got to the point, I, I'm, I'm very, I've always been skeptical. But I'm almost to the point where I'm so skeptical. I'm just like, okay, yeah, if you're still doing good in a month, I'll look into it. I say that, but I always do the research into it. But, you know what I mean? Like, into it, like, I'll, I'm willing to invest usually. Because a lot of this stuff, is, it's a joke. Sadly enough, that's, that's really what it is, all these things. Well, one of the things, I actually have an email. I'm going to put this email up here in the corner for you guys so you guys can see it. I get an email uh, way back from Paycoin saying, we're going to guarantee a $20 price, price floor. Yeah. So that's the first thing. I When I saw that, I was like, yeah. Um, because I've taken three and 400 level economic classes at college, and we've I've done a whole class. And I did a research paper on price, price floors and a free economy and the effects of it. And most of the time, there, there's exceptions, you know, at the national level and for, you know, emergency situations. And I don't want to get into that. But there's a, there's a re, there's a very minute reasoning for price floors. Normally, you're not going to see that happen. So to have someone in the cryptocurrency realm come out and say, we're going to guarantee a price for $20. For those of you who don't know, a price floor is what a guarantee. They're, they're going to say, if it drops below, below $20 a coin, we'll start buying the coins at $20 to guarantee it doesn't drop below that. And that goes into, I do a lot of research into this, and I really should do videos because it would be fascinating on buy and sell walls and you know, the divide between that and the, the, the capital needed to go either way. It's fascinating. But basically their goal was they were going to set a, a buy or sell wall at $20 and say, we're not going to let it get below $20, which is a joke, but a lot of people believed it. A lot of people believed it. So I want to look into some of the historical data because you guys know me and statistics, it's just one of the same for me. The first day that I could find record of it, uh, when it first came on market and was really kind of widely accepted for trade, was on December 16th, 2014. So less than a year ago. It had a market cap when it started on first day of trading at $79 million. And the coin was selling for $9.31. 
Now, I want to take a break there and say the first day I was trading, it was selling for $9.31. And they were guaranteeing that it was going to sell for 20 Their argument when they came out, as soon as this happened, they said, oh, well, we're going to give it a few days and then we're going to start buying up. We're going to let these initial investors um, buy up coins. And so they changed from saying we're going to guarantee $20 initially to saying we're going to let the original investors, the people that, you know, in December that want to buy on the pure coin, buy at $9, $10, $15. And then at point X, which they never clarified what day, we're going to come out and start buying up at $20 a coin. <laughs> now, if this doesn't seem like a scam to you, it, it, I mean, it just, it, it has every single factual evidence of a scam and uh, a Ponzi scheme, but we'll continue. At the one month, oh, not even at the one month point, at the peak, this is the highest peak that um, Paycoin has ever been at, was on December 22nd, 2014. So very few days after December 16th, and near Christmas, I might add, it was at $175 million. $175 million. So in less than about five days, we went from $79 million to $175 million. <laughs> Almost $100 million added. Now, you know, we can talk about it's not really that much added to the economy. It's, you know, valuations and all that. But still, $100 million is a lot of money. The coin went from 931 to 1316 in five days. Crazy. I mean, if you're, even if you were, even if you knew this was a scam and you were looking to just make some short, you know, you were hoping to ride the pump and dump or ride the scam, you did pretty well in the, fir- the first five days. On January 4th, which was one of the lowest peaks we had in that, you know, one month period, we were looking at $38 million. And uh, three dollars and ten cents per coin. So instantly, you can see, you know, between January twenty second or December twenty second and January fourth, we saw a huge collapse in the coin. But what's worse is the coin started to rebound. Now, not very much, about ten million dollars. It came on January sixteenth, which is about ten days later from January fourth. It went up to forty seven million, so about an extra ten million dollars on market cap or a market valuation. And the coin went from three ten on the fourth to 384 on the 16th. So it gained about 80 cents. Here's the problem. Still, in January, on January 16th, they guaranteed that at point X, they never verified, that they would buy up at $10 a coin. Okay, so think about this. You go from $9 a coin to $13 a coin, then back down to $3 a coin, then up to 384 a coin, and the company is still saying, oh, no, no we're, we're going to buy it up at $20 a coin. So you, the sad thing is you had these people who, who you know, don't, didn't do their research probably, but they said, oh, it's at $3 a coin. It's going to go up to 20 Why don't I invest? And so we saw you know, a spike of investors. Our big spike was between December um, 16th and December 22nd um, because of you know, all the kind of... The problem with um, pump and dumps with cryptocurrencies that aren't the same that we saw you know, in, in the leading up of the stock market between the 1880s and 1920s in the United States market um, is that we have rapid commu- telecommunications. Back then we had people, and there's, I, I'm fascinated by these stories, people would sit and you know, watch the tellers uh, or the ticketers, and this is kind of a fascinating historical thing, but they basically these little strips of paper that would just come out, and they were, they were using different uh, telecommunications capabilities but they would, you know, you'd be like say in the Zanesville office, and you would figure out what the stock price was almost instantaneously in the early 1900s. Well, nowadays we have social media, we have, you know, and be that Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, uh, all this stuff, where if you're wanting to manipulate or to participate in a pump and dump, you get this idea of social interaction together. You're able to amass a large amount of people and get the social momentum moving. And that's what we saw between December 16th and December 22nd. We saw a social movement and a potential to raise capital um, with their guarantee that it was going to be $20 a coin with a price floor. And I've never seen a successful price floor with a cryptocurrency. It's happened. A few small-time coins tried to do it. Paycoin has been by far the largest one trying to attempt to do it. But still, they failed because price floors don't work. Companies were using this idea of a price floor to scam and to Ponzi scheme people out of their money. But again, I digress. Let's move on. On February 16th, which would be a month from January 16th, it went from 47 million in January to 14 million in February. It went from 384 a coin, $3.84, to $1.06 a coin. Still, in February, Paycoin guaranteed at point X that they would come out and guarantee $20 a coin. Though I think a lot of people that were invested in Paycoin certainly started seeing the writing on the wall and said, you're never going to give us $20 a coin 
what you said was a lie. And at the same time, we have this guy who, you know, was scamming, I don't want to say his name, but he scammed, you know, GAW miners, the hardware side of it. He scammed the hash coin and the hash mining side of it. And then he moved in and tried to scam people with a new cryptocurrency coin. And this one so far, I want to explain this because this is an interesting news story. We have parts that in, De- in the early December and in, early, in, and in January, they had people that were mining, that, that, were, that were mining Bitcoin, SHA-256 coin, uh, mining algorithm, they were turning their Bitcoin mining machines to pay coin because this idea that it was going to be guaranteed twenty dollars a coin. I mean, you have you know seasoned Bitcoin miners and um, and also Bitcoin mining contract providers that are shifting and allowing the customers to shift and their investors to shift to pay coin because they think it's going to be this huge momentum. I talk about the social issue. It really there were. I mean, I was reading people. You know, they were emailing me and saying, Jason. You should do a video on this. This is the next big thing. This is the next revolution of Bitcoin. And I tried to email with them back, and you know, you get people that are just like, no, 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 you don't understand, Jason. This is the next big thing. It wasn't, and you know, I don't give them financial or investment advice, but I try to keep people informed. And you know, sadly enough, sometimes people don't take the advice and the you know recommendations that I provide. And so I thought that was crazy. I just thought, you know, the people were switching from mining bitcoins to pay coins because they thought this twenty-dollar price wall was going to exist. And I could read tons of stories. I could read about the, the money this guy wasted, how he's been investigated by the FBI, by federal agencies. He's being sued. I could do all that. But I think the price and the evaluation speak for itself. So let's skip ahead to the three-month three month point. We're looking at it at $9 million market cap and 66 cents. <laughs> but let's, let's forget about that. Let's move on to the six-month valuation point. At the six-month, which would be June 16th, we'd be looking at a market cap of $1 million dollars and a coin valuation of 6.7 cents per coin. Now, if we go back to January, or not January, December 16th, 2014, less than six, yeah, less, well, actually, exactly six months ago, from January, or from June 16th, we went from $79 million market cap to $1 million market cap. We went from $9.31 a coin to 6.7 cents a coin. Guys, this is what happens with everything. We saw this with, and I did videos about Quirkcoin. Uh, I, I warned people about it, but I did videos about it. We saw Quirkcoin. Ha- if you follow the, you know, the the shift of what the the maps look like and the you know charts, they almost are identical to Quirkcoin. All these coins do the same thing. And the sad thing is, people they take an early you know new idea like Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency, a you know a revolutionized worldwide currency, or you know. Fiat, it's not fiat based, a currency or commodity. I, I, it's, there's still a debate whether it's a currency or commodity, and I can entertain that discussion for hours on a podcast if we wanted to. But the thing is, no matter if it's a currency or commodity, Bitcoin is changing the world. And the sad thing is, you have people out there who want to profit, you know, and the sad thing, and it, it gets even sadder for me because, and this is why it's such a serious tone. You can profit with Bitcoin. You can profit by, you know, developing services to side Bitcoin. You can profit by helping develop, you know, um, products that work on Bitcoin, not just a service of Bitcoin, but work on top of Bitcoin. You can, you know, do like I do. You can do videos. You can write news articles. You can do all this stuff. But you don't. You have people out there who want to scam. They want to make quick money. Uh, and Bitcoin is really, and I hate to say this, but Bitcoin is quick money. I mean, the yields we see a 400% yield a year with Bitcoin. I mean, you can't get better than that. And yet, we have people, you know, want to go out and scam Ponzi scheme. You know, we have cases where the FBI has arrested people. Um, Pirate 41, I believe. You know, he had a, he had a, a scheme going on that you were making five to seven percent a week. It was actually market valuation about what other people were, you know, getting, but without people wanting to put, you know, they were saying, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do all my research and everything. Here, take my money. So he just was doing a Ponzi scheme of money in, money out. He got caught by the FBI. You know, these people are going to get caught. This guy's being investigated. He's probably going to be charged. Hopefully, I'll hold my fingers uh, because people do need to be held responsible when they manipulate and attempt to, you know, steal people's money. And usually, it's hard-earned money. So my big thing is, guys, Paycoin is another prime example, just like Corecoin, and just like there will be, you know, more coins that come out, just like it, and services that will try to scam you. If someone ever tries to offer you a twenty-dollar price for it, laugh in their face because they can't guarantee it. 
And, and the, th the thing was, is, and it, I argue with people in email about this. They said, well, Jason, you don't understand because I talked to this guy. I talked to you know, some of his you know, people that's investors and you know, people that have been also invested in this coin. And the thing is, is Jason, they have all these companies in, you know, involved in this. This is, they have all these NDAs signed. They have all these contracts. You don't understand. Paycoin is going to be revolutionary. And I said, be skeptical. That's, that's what I want to leave you guys with. Be skeptical of everything, not just in cryptocurrencies, but in the world. Don't be too skeptical like I am, but be skeptical of the world around you and what you're being told and investigate for yourself. Thanks for watching. I know this is a way more serious topic, but I think it's something that really needs to be said. And I'm sad because a lot of people have emailed me. They've lost money just like they did with Corecoin. They lost me with Paycoin. And I hope that we see some justice for these people. Um, I know a lot of times people say with the cryptocurrencies, well, you know, we don't want government intervention. But then as soon as something like this happens, they're begging for it. So Bitcoin will have to, and we've seen this you know, in different states like California or Virginia is doing it right now or New York, where they try to regulate Bitcoin or even at the federal level. It, it's an argument. Some people say Bitcoin because it should be completely independent of government. Some people say, and this is the few I understand, that Bitcoin can work with government completely but be independent. And a lot of people agree that eventually, besides the people that are crazy on both sides, that somewhere in the middle we'll get to a point where Bitcoin will coexist with you know the functioning governments that exist today people are going to give you arguments you know back and forth but you know just consider that so i leave you guys like i said before be skeptical of these new adventures uh these new uh, investments that come out you know bitcoin by itself is a very risky investment so is every you know everything cryptocurrency is why i consider and i tell this in my wealth portfolio videos it's a very risky you know um, adventure that you really don't want to put more than three or five percent of your you know net worth in and uh, when people do put more than that in, and then they get even riskier with Paycoin or Corecoin, or like me with even some of the smaller cryptocurrencies that I invest in, kind of, you know, just experiment with, there's a high risk. I Meaning, yeah, there's a high possibility of a very high reward. There's also a very high probability of, and more likely of, um, you know, scam, Ponzi, or just the coin failing. Have a great time, guys. Thanks for watching. And I enjoy all my viewers that want to watch my videos, that get this information. And I know sometimes I, I, I say that over and over again, and, but it's really important to me. You know, I do these videos and I talk about things like pay coin or court coin or, or investment opportunities because it concerns me. I want people to be educated investors. I don't give investment or financial advice, but I want you to, to know how to do your own research and know what's going on in the, in the realm of cryptocurrencies. Thanks for watching.